Hello friends, welcome to Knowledge Bites. Friends, today I am going to teach you all about cervical cancer. That is the cancer in cervix. Okay, but for the classification, I just recommend you to please look upon your books. Okay, now starting with cervical cancer. This is the cervix, and this is the vagina. Cervix. Vagina. This part is known as endocervix, and this part, which is opening is vagina, is known as exocervix. Endocervix. Endocervix is lined by columnar epithelium. Endocervix is lined by columnar epithelium, and exocervix. Exocervix is lined by squamous epithelium. Okay, now between the exocervix and endocervix, there is an area. That area is known as. area of transformation zone in the area of transformation zone you will get squamous cells also and columnar cells also so this is also known as squamous columnar junction so the area of squam area of transformation zone is the most common site for squamous metaplasia It doesn't mean that only squamous metaplasia occurs. Adenocarcinoma are also seen, as well as mixed type of carcinomas are also seen. That is both squamous and adenocarcinoma both are seen. Okay, so what is the most common cause of cervical cancer? The most common cause of cervical cancer is HPV infection. we will see other etiology in later stage okay so the most common cause of squamous uh, sorry the cervical cancer is hpv infection so now we will see the hpv infection that is the human papilloma virus so the human papilloma human papilloma virus they are divided into two groups that is the low risk subtype and high risk subtype the low risk subtype strains are 6 11 high risk subtype strains are 16 18 31 33 52 58 the low risk subtype strain causes viral warts and condyloma acuumatata viral warts and condyloma acuumatata here the high risk subtype causes cancer now we will see the pathogenesis hpv infection subtype 16 18 31 33 58 58 they all produces malignancy since they produces e6 protein and e7 protein e6 protein decreases the activity of p53 in p53 gene therefore increases the telomerase activity telomerase enzyme activity will be increased and e7 protein it decreases the rb gene therefore apoptosis will not occur and hence both of them will cause cancer there will be increased chance of cancer 
immortality will occur to the cell since we are knowing the property of the cancerous cells there will be increase in nc ratio there will be dense nuclei dense chromosomes so the infection how the infection of hpv human papilloma virus occurs so the increased chance of hpv infection is due to multiparity high risk group decreased immunity multiple partner early age of pregnancy okay now we will see the other etiology of how cervical cancer occurs so the other etiology are due to smoking hpv infection we are knowing but in smoking is uh, how from smoking cervical cancer occur it is due to the exposure of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon the third etiology is immunodeficiency since the body does not have equal uh, the body has inadequate amount in inadequate they are uh, very much inadequate to remove the virus the fourth etiology can be ocps since ocp alter the cervical tissue the ph is altered so therefore there can be increase in chance of cervical cancer what is the clinical feature of cervical cancer there is a development of post coital bleeding and sometimes fluids are discharged development of post coital bleeding sometimes discharge of fluid now we will see the individual region affecting the cervical tissue individual region affecting the cervical tissue so just look upon the diagram which i am making just concentrate upon here this is the basement membrane these are the cells okay suppose if only the lower part is involved then this is known as cervical intraepithelial neoplasm 1 if only the lower part is involved just near the basement membrane this is known as cervical intraepithelial neoplasm 1 if more than 1/3 of the layer is involved this is known as cervical intraepithelial neoplasm 2 if more than 2/3 layer is involved but not the complete thickness is involved this is known as cervical intraepithelial neoplasm 3 if suppose whole of the layer of the cells are involved except except the basement membrane this is known as carcinoma in c2 in carcinoma in c2 basement membrane is not involved only the complete th complete thickness of the epithelial cell are involved okay now we will classify the cervical intraepithelial neoplasm into two groups that is the 
low grade squamous intra epithelial lesion high grade squamous intraepithelial lesion in low grade squamous intraepithelial lesion cin1 involvement you can see there is an involvement of lowest layer of the cells in high grade squamous intraepithelial lesion cin1 cin2 and carcinoma in c2 the conversion of low grade squamous intraepithelial lesion to high grade squamous intraepithelial lesion is only 10 percent and that over in period of 10 years okay now for screening screening of cervical cancer so the screening of cervical cancer is done by VIA that is the visual inspection after application of acetic acid visual inspection after application of acetic acid followed by colposcopy this is the best method for screening okay and how it is done it is done by pap smear by iris spatula this is known as iris spatula tissues are taken from transformation zone tissues are taken from transformation zone cells are fixed on slides detection of squamous dysplasia now we will see that uh, where is the what are the extensions of cervical carcinoma that is the metaplasia extensions of cervical cancer it can extend to directly to vagina urinary bladder if it involves the urinary bladder then it can also involve the ureter and if the blockage in the ureter occurs then renal dysfunction will occur if renal dysfunction occurs then death of the patient can occur it can also involves the lungs now what are the drugs drugs which are given for the prophylaxis of cervical cancer the drugs are Gardasil so this much is about the cervical cancer I hope so you like my video thank you